dear cadets assalamu alaikum welcome you all at my online class this is maksud rahman lecturer in chemistry borishal cadet college borishal considering prevailing situation borishal cadet college is providing necessary academic guidelines and short lecture on a specific link periodically it is very necessary to keep yourself inside home along with your family members for avoiding the running pandemic covid 19 In our previous class, I discussed on concentration, units of concentration, and conversion of concentration from one unit to another. By seeing this picture, I think you can guess today's topics. Yes, I will discuss about titration and redox reaction for chapter three, stoichiometric chemistry of class twelve. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to define titration. explain the theory of titration define redox reaction you can also explain the theory of redox reaction you can define oxidation number and find out the oxidation numbers of different compounds so now what is titration titration is a quantitative chemical analysis technique where a solution of known concentration is used to determine the concentration of unknown solution in presence of a suitable indicator what is indicator a indicator is a substance that indicate either a substance acidic basic or neutral but in titration in this case of titration indicator indicates the end point of the reaction so in titration the solution of known concentration is known as titrant and the unknown concentration solution is known as analyte so here you can see a picture of titration process typically the tritent that means the known concentration solution is added from borate known concentration is taken in borate and unknown concentration solution is taken in conical flux so unknown unknown solution is called analyte and the known solution is called tritent this tritent is added to analyte and indicator is used to usually signal the in point of the reaction by knowing the volume of tritent added from borate allows the determination of the concentration of unknown solution so what are the types of titration there are five kinds of titration one is acid based titration redox titration gas phase titration compleximetric titration and last one is zeta potential titration and we will discuss about acid based titration and redox titration so first one acid based titration acid based titration is a quantitative analysis of acid and bases through this process an acid or base of known concentration neutralizes an base or acid of unknown concentration so what are the basic setup of acid based titration the borate is first filled with a solution of strong base for example one molar sodium hydroxide we take one molar sodium hydroxide of known concentration so in borate we take base that means sodium hydroxide and in conical flux we can take 10 ml of hydrochloric acid from by, by using pipette and after taking hydrochloric acid in conical flux we add one or two drops of indicator this indicator indicates the end point of the reaction so now drop wise add tritent from the borate until the in point arrives what is in point the in point is that point when addition of a single drop of indicator changes the color when adding of a single drop of indicator changes the color of the solution permanently is called the in point at the in point we hold the hold the falling of solution from borate and the total amount of base from the borate we can determine and by using this equation given below we find out the concentration of the unknown solution here we use sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid that that's why here is a reaction sodium hydroxide react with hydrochloric acid and form sodium chloride and water so for for this reaction the equation is x va sa equal to y vb sb here x equal to coefficient of bases 
and y is equal to coefficient of acid. For this reaction, x and y, the value of x and y is 1. And Va equal to volume of acid, it is 10 ml in, we take in conical flux, and Vb equal to volume of bases, we add this base from bullet, and Sb equal to strength or concentration of base, that is 1 molar, and Sa, strength or concentration of acid, that is unknown. By using this equation, we can determine the strength or concentration of this acid. That means unknown acid. Now, here is a problem. If 19 ml of sodium hydroxide will add it for titrating one molar 10 ml hydrochloric acid, then find out the concentration of sodium hydroxide solution. So at first, we need to react sodium hydroxide with hydrochloric acid. Because when sodium hydroxide added with hydrochloric acid, it reacts with each other and form sodium chloride and water. So as for acid-based addition, we use this equation X B A S A equal to Y B B S B. Here X is the coefficient of bases, that means it is one, and Y is equal to coefficient of acid. Coefficient of acid is also one. And V A equal to volume of acid, volume of acid is 10 ml, VB equal to volume of bases, it is 19 ml. S equal to strength or concentration of acid, that is 1 ml. And SB equal to strength or concentration of bases, that will be, we find out. So by using this equation and by using all this value, we can find out the concentration or strength of bases. Now, oxidation and reduction reaction. It can be defined by three ways, in terms of oxygen transfer, in terms of hydrogen transfer, and in terms of electron transfer. So firstly, in terms of oxygen transfer, oxidation reaction is gain of oxygen, and reduction is loss of oxygen. That means the reaction in where oxygen adds with a substance is called oxidation, and the reaction in where oxygen is lost from a substance is called reduction. Here is an example. When ferric oxide reacts with carbon monoxide, we get iron and carbon dioxide. In this reaction, carbon monoxide reacts with ferric oxide and one oxygen atom adds with carbon monoxide and we get carbon dioxide. As oxygen adds with carbon monoxide, this is called oxidation reaction. And ferric oxide converts into iron, we can see that here oxygen is lost from ferric oxide and we get iron. That as this substance loss, elect, loss oxygen, that's why it is reduction. So we can say that the reaction in where oxygen add with a substance is called oxidation and the reaction in where oxygen removed from a substance is called reduction. Because both reaction and oxidation are going on side by side, this is known as redox reaction. In terms of hydrogen transfer, what is oxidation and reduction reaction? Oxygen is loss of hydrogen and reduction is gain of hydrogen. For example, ethanol can be oxidized to ethanol in presence of potassium dichromate and sulfuric acid. Here you can see that ethanol converted into ethanol. Here, hydrogen is removed. As hydrogen is removed, it is called oxidation reaction. Again, ethanol can be converted into ethanol by using sodium tetrahydroborate. Here, hydrogen atom adds with ethanol and form ethanol. As hydrogen adds with this substance, this is called reduction reaction. So we can say that the reaction in where hydrogen loss is called oxidation and the reaction in where hydrogen gained by a substance is called reduction reaction. So now, in terms of electron transfer, what is oxidation and reduction reaction? So oxidation is loss of electron. That means Leo. Leo means loss, electron means oxidation. And gain of electrons, G-E-R, gain electron means reduction. For example, here you can see that when magnesium reacts with copper 2 plus, we get copper and magnesium 2 plus. Magnesium lost two electron and get, we get magnesium two plus. 
Here magnesium donate two electron, that means lost two electron, that's why it is oxidation. This process is called oxidation. And copper two plus except two electron, and we get metallic copper as copper except electron. This is called reduction reaction. So if we summarize, what is redox reaction? Oxidation reaction means gain of electrons, and reduction means loss of electrons and loss of hydrogen is also called oxidation and gain of hydrogen is also called reduction and loss of electron means oxidation gain of electron means reduction so by combining first three letters of reduction first three letters of reduction and two letters of oxidation we get redox reaction so redox reaction means combination of reduction and oxidation reactions. So we can say that in a redox reaction, their reduction and oxidation occurs simultaneously. Now, what is oxidizing and reducing agent? Here you can see that when zinc react with copper two plus, we get zinc two plus and copper. So zinc lost two electron and we get zinc two plus. Lost electron means oxidation the substance which donate electron is called reducing agent. So in oxidation reaction, we have reducing agent. Now, copper two plus accept two electron and we get metallic copper. So as copper two plus accept electron and for metallic copper, this is reduction reaction because we know that gain electron means reduction. So in reduction reaction, we have oxidizing agent. So what is oxidizing agent? The substance which accept electron in redox reaction is called oxidizing agent. And what is reducing agent? The substance which donate electrons in redox reaction is called reducing reagent. Another example for your under better understanding. When copper react with oxygen, we get cupric oxide here copper donate two electrons and we form, we get copper two plus and oxygen, initially it is zero and after reaction we get oxygen get two minus. So we can say that copper donate electron as it is donate electron is called reducing agent and oxygen accept electron, that's why it is called oxidizing agent. So if we summarize, oxidizing means gain electron Oxidizing as it means gain electron and reducing as it means accept elect donate electrons. So here are the some examples of reducing and oxidizing agent. For example, when sodium chloride react with sodium hydroxide, sodium chloride, sodium and chlorine reaction with each other, and we get sodium chloride. And here sodium is reducing agent and chlorine is oxidizing agent. When lithium and react with oxygen, we get lithium oxide. Here lithium is reducing agent, oxygen is oxidizing agent. When sodium and react with oxygen, we get sodium peroxide. In that case, sodium is reducing agent and oxygen is oxidizing agent. There are some also two examples of reducing and oxidizing agent. Now, there are some important examples of oxidizing agents, for example, Molecules made up of electronegative elements, for example, oxygen, ozone, and halogen, all are important electro, all are oxidizing agents. And among halogens, fluorine is the most strongest oxidizing agent. Another one is compound containing an element which is in the higher oxidized state. That means potassium permanganate, potassium dichromate, nitric acid potassium chloride, et cetera, are called oxidizing agent because in potassium permanganate, the oxidation state of magnesium, manganese is plus seven. In case of potassium dichromate, it is plus six. So these compounds have higher oxidized states. That's why these are oxidizing agent. Again, oxides of metal and non-metals are also called oxidizing agent. Now, some important reducing agent 
all metals are reducing agent for example sodium zinc iron aluminum all are act as reducing agent a few non metals for example carbon hydrogen sulfur phosphorus etc also act as reducing agent hydro acid for example hydrochloric acid hydrobromic acid hydroiodic acid these are hydro acids these act as reducing agent there are some few compounds containing an element in the lower oxidation state for example ferrous chloride ferrous sulfate just stannous chloride mercury chloride in ferrous chloride oxidation state of iron is 2 in ferrous sulfate oxidation state of iron is 2 as these compounds contain lower oxidation state this substance can act as reducing agent there are some also metallic hydrates for example sodium hydride lithium hydride calcium hydride all hydrates act as reducing agent and you can see also organic acid like formic acid also act as reducing agent so now a question comes what is oxidation number oxidation number is also known as oxidation state and it is the number of electrons that an atom or ion may lose gains or appears to use when joining with other atoms in a compounds there are some rules for finding out the oxidation numbers first one is the oxidation number of free element is always zero the atoms in helium and nitrogen the oxidation number is zero because helium and oxygen are free elements that's why oxidation number of free elements is zero and second one is the oxidation number of monoatomic ion equals to the charge of the ion for example sodium plus its oxidation number is plus 1 because its charge is plus so its oxidation number is plus 1 here is another example n3 minus as it is negatively charged its oxidation number is minus 3 so we can say that the oxidation number of monoatomic ion equals to the charge of that ion number 3 the oxidation number of hydrogen is basically plus 1 but when it combines with a electro positive atom that means it acts as electro negative in that case it is minus 1 here you can see that the oxidation number of hydrogen is minus 1 because an higher electro positive atom attached with this compound the oxidation number of oxygen is in compound usually Minus two, but in case of peroxide, it is minus one. The oxidation number of group one elements, that means alkali group. The oxidation number of alkali group is plus one. The oxidation number of group two elements is in a compound is called is plus two. The oxidation number of group seven elements in a compound is one. except when that element is combined with one having a higher electronegativity for example the oxidation number of chlorine is minus 1 as in compound hydrogen hydrochloric acid or hydrogen chloride here chlorine is more electronegative than hydrogen that's why chlorine e oxidation number of chlorine is minus 1 but when chlorine adds with another electronegative elements for example hypochlorous acid here oxygen is more electronegative than chlorine that's why the oxidation number of chlorine is plus 1 and the sum of oxidation number of all the atoms in a neutral compound if the compound is neutral the oxidation number of this compound is zero now there are some problems related to oxidation number or finding out the oxidation number first one is find the oxidation number of chromium in cro4 2- here you can say that this is a charged particle so the sum of oxidation number for this compound is minus 2 and the oxygen in a compound is minus 2 so we have four oxygen so the oxidation number of oxygen is minus 8 with this formation information we can write chromium plus minus 8 minus 8 is for oxygen equal to minus 2 minus 2 is as this substance is negatively charged and it is minus 2 that's why we can write this way so by compiling this we can find out the oxidation number of chromium is 
plus 6. Another example, find out the oxidation state of carbon in C2H3O2 minus. You can also see that this compound is negatively charged. So oxidation number or oxidation state for this compound is minus 1 because it is negatively charged. And the hydrogen in a compound is plus 1 and we have 3 hydrogen. So this value is plus 3. And in case of oxygen, it is minus 2. Since we have 2, hydro two oxygen, so we get minus 4. So by using this information, we can write 2 carbon plus, plus 3 plus minus 4. This is for hydrogen equal to minus 1. Minus 1 as this substance is negatively charged. So by compiling this equation, we can find C equal to 0. That means oxidation number of carbon is 0. So today we learned about titration, acid-based titration, redox reaction, oxidizing and reducing agent, and oxidation number. So if you have any query, please write it in comment box. You have some home tasks. I set a CQ question for you. For example, for tritating compound A, that means sodium hydroxide with 1 molar 10 ml hydrochloric acid, 90 ml of A will need it. With basis of this stem, first question is, what is analyte? This is knowledge-based question. Number two, in sodium chloride, when sodium and chlorine react with each other, we get sodium chloride. And in this reaction, sodium is a reducing agent. Explain it. So this is comprehension type question. Number three, find out the oxidation number of sodium in a compound. Application type question. And last one is analyze the concentration of compound A stated in the stem. This is higher order type question. So now thank you very much for your participation. I want to say you that you must stay at home and make your family members conscious about novel coronavirus, COVID-19. Stay safe and stay home and make the best use of your time. Thank you. Thank you very much.